Greetings people, we are here to have a small discussion with you on this evergreen topic of instruments in general surgery, myself Dr. Juveria and the second half of the video will be covered by Dr. Manikantha. This discussion will be useful in practical examination of general surgery both for undergraduates and the postgraduates. You can also download the PDF, the link will be given at the end of the video. So first of all, before going to individual instruments, just a few words on what is expected of you in the exam. First you have to be able to name the instrument and hold it correctly. Holding we will discuss after the next slide. Then before jumping directly to uses, there are two things that you need to know. One is material of that instrument. Just remember all the instruments here are made of stainless steel. And regarding sterilization technique, keep this general idea in mind that all the instruments are autoclaved except the sharp ones which are meant for cutting that include scissors and blades. Then comes the uses, you can divide them into diagnostic and therapeutic or mention the important or main uses first then mention surgeries from cranial to caudal direction. In last mention if the particular instrument can be used in place of any other instrument. We have segregated the instruments into these categories, but first let's have a quick discussion on different parts of a typical surgical instrument. Here we have rings for holding, a ratchet or lock, it has three levels. The examiner may ask you to unlock the instrument, then please do it with your dominant hand and never pull the blades horizontally, but rather vertically, upper blade above and lower blade below. Then it has a body. A shank or a shaft and a terminal blade or jaw connected with a joint which may be a box type of joint the one which is shown here this is the box type of joint and the other one is with a screw that is a pivot type of joint that you get to see in scissors here this golden color has some significance it is because of tungsten carbide coating which make the instruments more durable for longer period of time and it is especially important for instruments meant for cutting or holding like scissors and needle holders where specially the blades or tips of the instruments are coated. For handling a needle holder or a hemostat, partially insert your ring finger and thumb into the rings, put your middle finger at the lower end of the shaft, put your index finger near the joint for unlocking. Just move the upper blade with the help of your thumb. While using scissors, again ring finger and thumb inside the ring, middle finger at the lower end of the shaft, index finger at the joint or near the joint and you can put one or two of your fingers from the other hand below the scissor for stability. Now we will discuss our first bunch of instruments, forceps. Ram plays swab holding forceps. The shaft is long provided with ratchet. The blades are oval and fenestrated provided with serrations in the inner aspect. It may be straight or curved. Mention most common use first. The instrument is used for part preparation and painting. The correct sequence of painting here is betadine scrub, spirit. Then painting with betadine solution. Then go from cranial to caudal direction. In hepatobiliary surgeries, the instrument can be used for holding the swab to clean blood for holding fenders or Hartman's pouch of the gallbladder during cholecystectomy. In hydrated cyst surgeries, for removing the laminated membrane or daughter cyst. In gastrojejunostomy or gut anastomosis, for cleaning the blood in suture line. In retroperitoneal procedures, to strip off the peritoneum and to expose the retroperitoneal organs. It can also be used in place of OM forceps, tongue holding forceps and artery forceps in abscess cavity. Alice tissue holding forceps provided with ratchet, the tip of long blades of sharp teeth with grooves between them. When the ratchet is closed, the tooth of the one blade fits into the groove of other. The instrument is used for holding tissues like skin and linea alba in laparotomies to raise the skin flaps or holding the fascia in hernia repairs. In lump excision where we make an elliptical incision 
Ellis forceps are used to raise the skin flap. In craniotomy, to hold the gallia aponeurotica while raising the skin flap, in thyroid surgeries and neck dissection for holding the margins and raising the skin flaps, in genitourinary surgeries for holding the cut margins or neck of the bladder. Spencer Wells Hemostatic Forceps It is provided with a ratchet. The blades are half the length of the shaft and provided with transfer serrations throughout their length. In Kelly's and Adson's variety, the transfer serrations are in distal part of the blade only. As it's a hemostat, it is used for catching the bleeding vessels. It may also be used to hold the cut margins of the various layers of abdomen and in intestinal resection anastomosis to hold the mesenteric vessels. They are used in appendectomy to split the internal oblique and transversus abdominis for McBurney's gridiron incision which is a muscle splitting incision and sometimes to crush the base of the appendix. The forceps are used to open the abscess cavity by Hilton's method. In Hilton's method, an opening is made into the abscess cavity with closed sinus forcep or a blunt hemostat. Then the blades are opened allowing the pus to come out. During excision of a lump, the forceps are used to dissect out the lump from the surrounding tissue. They are used in venesection for holding the vein. The veins used for section are basilic vein and cephalic vein in upper limb and great saphenous vein in the lower limb. During suturing, the forceps can be used to hold the end of the thread or to tie the knot. It is specially useful when the length of the thread is small. Mosquito hemostatic forceps Similar to Spencer Wells type of hemostatic forceps except the blades are smaller with fine serrations. These are used as hemostat in children or infants or in cleft lip operations. In appendectomy, it is used to puncture the meso appendix and tie a ligature around it or to hold the stump before burying it by a purse string suture. These purse string sutures are circular continuous type of Lambert sutures. Please remember, Lambert sutures are seromuscular sutures and they are the most common type of sutures used in GI surgeries. In circumcision, three pairs of mosquito forceps are applied two in either side of the prepucial orifice and one in the midline. Babcock's tissue forceps The terminal part of the blades are curved and fenestrated. When the ratchet is closed, the ridge present at the tip of one blade fits into the groove of the other and it is a non-traumatic forcep. The instrument is mainly used in appendectomy. The first Babcock's will hold the tip of the appendix, second will hold the body and the third will hold the base. In Coledoco duodenostomy, which is the most common Coledoco enterostomy performed for dilated CBD with multiple stones, Babcock's is used to hold the duodenum. Please remember, in this surgery, coches manoeuvre or cocherization is performed, which is mobilization of the duodenum to explore the CBT. And skin incision is also a coches incision. They are also used for holding the cut margins of the stomach in gastrectomy or gastrojejunostomy or to hold the gut while applying purse string sutures in gastrostomy or jejunostomy. In open procedure of intestinal resection and anastomosis, the forceps can be used to hold the cut margin of the bowel, also in genitourinary surgeries to hold the cut margins of the bladder. Lies right angled forceps, it has a ratchet and the terminal blades are bent at right angle with transverse serrations on inner aspect. Another name of this instrument is cholecystectomy forcep. Because they are commonly used to dissect cystic duct and artery and to pass ligature around them, the forcep can be used as a hemostat while dissecting at depth to handle vessels like superior, middle and inferior thyroid vessel in thyroidectomy, gastric and gastroepiploic vessels in gastrectomy, splenic vessels in splenectomy and renal vessels in nephrectomy. It can also be used in vagotomy to dissect the anterior and posterior vagus nerve. Desjardins forceps, it is without ratchet and shaft is curved. The small sized blades are fenestrated centrally with no serrations. The instrument is used in coledocolithotomy. 
to remove stones from common bile duct. In laparoscopic cholecystectomy, the gallbladder is partially delivered through the wound, opened and stones are removed by Desjardins forceps. Then the empty gallbladder is extracted out with ease. It can also be used in removal of urinary stones. Bone nibbler or bone nibbling forceps. The blades are concave with sharp edges. This one is the single action bone nibbler. We also have double action bone nibblers and those are generally superior to the single action. Double action bone nibblers have double liver action similar to this double action bone cutter. The instrument is used to nibble or break the bone into small pieces in craniotomy, rib resection and amputation of the small bones. Collingwood Stewart ring shaped blade hernia forceps with a ratchet and two semicircular blades forming a circular opening. It is used during hernia operations to hold the spermatic cord to retract it while repairing the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. Now the instruments used for suturing. Mayo Higar needle holder. This is the curved one and you will always find a longitudinal groove on the inner aspect of the blade in every needle holder which allows firm gripping of the needle. Needle holders with fine blades are used for finer needles like 2030 atraumatic type. Smaller ones are used at the surface and the longer ones are for suturing inside the viscera. Curved ones have the advantage of better visualization so used for suturing at depth. The left one is hemostatic forcep, lighter with longer blades and transverse serrations. The right one is needle holder, heavier, with smaller blade, crisscross serrations and a longitudinal groove. Plane dissecting forceps with transfer serration at the tip of the blade which helps in lifting the tissues and no tooth at the tip. It is used in all operations to hold delicate structures like peritoneum and nerves and the structure which may bleed easily like vessels and muscles. For the same reason, it is also used in pediatric surgeries. In appendectomy, the instruments are used to bring the cecum out to deliver the appendix. In gastrojejunostomy, to hold the gut margins. In hernia repairs, to hold hernial sac during dissection. In nerve repair and vessel anastomosis, fine tip adsense forceps are used. Tooth dissecting forceps. There is a tooth at the tip of one blade and a groove at the tip of the other blade and because of the tooth, the tissue may be better gripped. The tooth ones are used to hold tough and relatively avascular structures like skin, fascia and aponeurosis. In circumcision, fine tipped adsense forceps are used to hold the cut margins of prepuce. Now different types of scissors used in surgery. It's suture cutting scissors. These are curved scissors with small sharp and serrated blades which allows gripping of the suture material during removal. Since boiling or autoclaving damages the sharpness of the scissors, the scissors are dipped in lysol solution for sterilization. Mayo scissors are long and stout scissors. They are curved or straight, blunt or pointed. The scissors are used for cutting sutures dressings, drains and tough structures like fascia and epineurosis. As an appendectomy, it is used to split the internal oblique and transversus abdominis in muscle splitting grid iron incision at McBurney's point. Medzenbaum scissors, commonly known as tissue cutting scissors, they have long fine blades which may be straight or curved. It is used to cut uh, nerves, vessels or basically any soft tissue. Also, it is important not to mix the two types of the scissors. Never use the scissors you have used for suture cutting for cutting the tissue and never use tissue cutting scissors for cutting sutures during an operation. Hello, this is Mani and I am going to discuss about uh, retractors. Morris retractor has a L shaped blade with the lower end curved inward at right angle. The instrument is used to retract skin flap, strap muscles and sternocleidomastoid muscle during thyroidectomy and in radical neck dissection. In modified radical mastectomy to retract pectoralis muscle, in inguinal hernia operations especially while repairing posterior wall, 
in appendicectomy to retract abdominal wall and to visualize the cecum. Devers retractor is a large curved S-shaped retractor. It comes in different sizes depending on its width. Devers has multiple uses. It is used to retract liver in upper GI surgeries like gastrectomy, truncal vagotomy and cholecystectomy. In pancreatic jejunostomy, it is used to retract stomach and it is also used to retract abdominal wall while mobilizing the colon from the paracolic gutter in hemicolectomy and also in renal surgeries. In lower GI surgeries like abdominoperineal resection and anterior resection of the rectum, it is used to retract urinary bladder and uterus. Langenbach's retractor, the blade is curved at right angle and the tip is again curved for better retraction. Langenbach's retractor used for retraction in hernia repair and in superficial surgeries to retract skin, fascia and aponeurosis. Rook's double-ended C-shaped retractor with both ends curved for proper grip. Rook's double-ended C-shaped retractor is used for retraction in hernia repair, appendicectomy, wide excision and oral surgeries. Oxman retractor or Katzpa retractor has multiple hooks with pointed edges for firm retraction. Oakman's retractor is used to retract skin flap or fascia for operation at surface. For example, in excision of sebaceous cyst, lipoma and dermoid. Mollison's mastoid retractor has curved blades with sharp outward curved teeth four on each blade. It has ratchet hence self-retaining providing wide exposure. It is used in ENT surgeries like mastoid surgeries and laminectomy. It is also used in neurosurgery to retract scalp and also in limb surgeries to retract skin and fascia. Balfour's retractor has a horizontal bar on which one of the two blades is fixed and the other one slides with the help of a screw, hence self-retaining. It has also provision for attachment of third blade in the middle. This retractor is used to retract abdominal wall in various surgeries. In gastric surgeries like gastrectomy, gastrojejunostomy or vagotomy. Intestinal surgeries like bowel resection anastomosis, hemicolectomy and abdominoperineal resection and anterior resection of rectum. In pancreatic surgeries like Wipers procedure and pancreatico jejunostomy. In hepatic surgeries for hepatic resection and hydrated cyst. In adrenalectomy or excision of intraperitoneal cyst or sarcoma. Tuffier's self-retaining rib retractor, it has a shaft with serrations. The two blades are deep with outer flanges for proper grip. One blade is fixed while the other is adjustable and can be fixed at the desired width with the help of a screw. This retractor is used in thoracotomies in esophagectomy, mediastinal tumors, mitral valvotomy, diaphragmatic hernia and trauma surgeries. Now we are heading into metallic tubes. Suction tip. It comes in different types. Edson's fine suction tip, Yankur suction tip, Pool's multi-perforated suction tip. The suction instrument is used to suck out blood from surgical fields, pus or fluids in visceral cavities. Proctoscope. It is 3 inch long metallic instrument. It has inner rod with a rounded tip called as obturator and a speculum proper with a tapering diameter which allows light to reflect and pass distally. Here the uses can be divided into diagnostic and therapeutic uses. It is used for the diagnosis of parietal bleed, hemorrhoids and chronic fissures. But it is contraindicated in active anal fissures. It is also used to evaluate rectal or anal polyps. In perianal fistula, it is used to see internal opening. It is used to visualize any proliferative growth or ulceration in carcinoma of rectum and anal canal. It is used in ulcerative colitis to see futures of proctitis. In case of intersusception, the apex can be seen sometimes through the proctoscope. Among therapeutic uses, it is used in prolapse and to give sclerotherapy at the base of the pile. It is also used for cryotherapy and banding. It is also used in polypectomy and in suspected case of carcinomas to take biopsies. 
Rigid SIG border scope Rigid stainless steel instrument usually 25 cm in length. It has been widely replaced by plastic disposable and flexible sigmoidoscope. The rigid sigmoidoscopy procedure can be performed in outpatient setting but rectum should be empty for proper inspection. Here also we can divide the uses into therapeutic and diagnostic. The procedure is performed to assess rectal injuries. In proctitis, the mucosa seen through the scope is inflamed and fragile. The procedure is used for surveillance of polyposis. Familial adenomatous polyposis is defined by presence of more than 100 colorectal adenomas. They are always visible by the age of 30, after which non-visualization confirms absence of the disease. The carcinoma needs 10 to 30 years to develop after the onset of polyposis. Visualization of one or more polyps on sigmoidoscopy must be followed by a colonoscopy. After total colectomy in ulcerative colitis for diagnosis of rectal pathologies, for visualization of amoebic ulcers as most of them are in rectosigmoid. An outpatient sigmoidoscopy may be a prudent first in this infection, a biopsy and a scrape can also be taken. In suspected rectal and lower colon carcinoma to obtain biopsy, in infection by bacteria causing strawberry lesion of rectosigmoid, in endometriosis involving rectosigmoid junction which is seen as stricture, the procedure can be performed prior to hemorrhoid resection in evaluation of fish flow in ANO, as a follow-up procedure after incision and drainage of perianal abscess and after rectal, rectal surgeries to diagnose stenosis and to take biopsy from the same to differentiate it from recurrence. Now, therapeutic uses. In decompression of sigmoid volvulus, the instrument is inserted beyond the point of twist. Alternatively, a flatus tube can be inserted for 24 hours and a repeat x-ray can also be performed. Decompression is avoided in case if strangulation and bloody discharge in post-operative rectal stenosis, dilatation with rigid sigmoidoscopy is sufficient. The procedure can be complicated with bacteremia, hemorrhage or perfor perforation, especially in volvulus. Please remember, the rectosigmoid junction includes last 7 cm of sigmoid colon and upper 5 cm of rectum. The location is however variable, usually 15 cm above the anal verge. Bard Parker's handle. A number is written on the handle, maybe 3, 5, 7 and 4. This is BP handle number 3. In scalpel handle number 4, the site for attachment of the blade is little wider than the other numbers. Used for attaching scalpel blade and to make skin incision. Specific blade numbers are attached to specific BP handle. For example, 10, 11, 12, 15 blades can be attached to BP handle number 3, 5 or 7. Let us know different methods to hold a knife while making incision. Dinner knife position for lengthy incision. Pen holding position for incision over nerve, vessel or tumors. Fiddle bow position for incision on delicate tissue with less pressure. Grasping position for long sweeping cuts. Stab position used with used using 11 number blade with the number 3 BP handle. Specific uses of each blade. 10 number blade used for making small skin incision. 11 number blade used for stab incision for abscess drainage. Arteriotomy small incision for drains. 12 number blade used for tonsillectomy and suture removal but for suture removal uh, it is not recommended with the blades. 15 number blade used for sebaceous cyst excision and venesection and for minor OT procedures and also used for plastic facial and head and neck surgeries. 22 number blade used for abdominal incision for laparotomy. 23 and 25 number blades used for large incision, for example, laparotomy, thoracotomy, craniotomy and on limb surgeries. Blades for skin incision usually have a curved cutting margin and those for stab incision has a sharp tip. 
Blade number 12 has curved cutting edge that should face the surgeon. Towel clip. Here we have Mayo's towel clip with cross action tip and no approximation. Joins cross action type towel clip. On pressing the shaft, it opens up and vice versa. The towel clips are used for fixing drapes and cables to draping sheets or for holding the rib while elevating a flail segment of chest. It can also replace tongue holding or cord holding forceps. Farabuff periosteum elevator, metallic body with the tip bent forward and sharp. The index finger of the dominant hand should rest over the ridges while elevating the periosteum. It is used to elevate the periosteum in all operations on the bone to get a safe plane away from vessels, nerves and tendons and to lift muscles of the bone to lift full thickness tissue flaps. Please note that in excision of osteochondroma, the periosteum is not elevated, rather it is excised with the tumor so that it avoids recurrence. Doin's rib respiratory has a curved semicircular distal blade to pass under the rib surface. Blade should be facing upward and forward. It is used for separating the periosteum after elevating it by periosteum elevator and for elevating the inner surface of the rib. Please note that the blade is passed from upper margin of the rib to prevent injury to the intercostal vessels. Pairs crushing clamp parts are Blades long and heavy with vertical serrations. Handle is stout with double lever arrangement to magnify the pressure to the blades producing a crushing effect. Used during partial gastrectomies. Please note, it is to be used towards the side of the stomach that is to be resected. Doyne's intestinal occlusion clamp has a pair of long blades with vertical serrations and a ratchet. It may be straight or curved. It is used in gut resection and anastomosis. Please remember some important named suturing methods in bowel anastomosis. Zerni Lambert suture which is a double layer closure is a gold standard technique. Here we have an inner continuous observable suture layer involving full thickness and an outer interrupted often permanent suture layer involving only seromuscular layer. The outer sutures are called as Lambert sutures and it is the most commonly used sutures in GI surgeries. The submucosa has high collagen content, hence the most stable layer in GIT wall, therefore must be included in anastomosis. We also have other two layer techniques like Cocker's method and one proposed by Sen, Halstead sutures or horizontal mattress sutures through seromuscular layer. It is used in multilayer anastomosis and the mucosa is excluded to reduce chances of tissue necrosis and luminal narrowing. Other techniques are Connell, Cushing and Gamby. Aneurysm needle has a handle, shaft and blade. Terminal part of a blade has eye at the tip. Aneurysm needle used in thyroidectomy to pass a ligature around superior thyroid vessels close to upper pole of the thyroid gland. In, in cholecystectomy to ligate cystic duct and cystic artery. In splenectomy to ligate splenic vessels. In nephrectomy to ligate renal vessels in venous section to pass the ligature around the vein. Its original use used to pass a ligature around an aneurysm at proximal and distal end. Lister's metallic boogie has rounded handle with a long shaft and tip is olive pointed. In Clutton's variety, the handle is violin shaped and tip is blunt. Metallic boozy used in urethral structure and cystoscopy for dilatation of urethra. In railroad technique during repair of rupture urethra. Railroad technique which is an old classical method of treating complete rupture of membranous urethra which causes floating of prostate. This technique railroad a catheter across the gap and drawing the prostate down to triangular ligament. In, in cholecolithotomy, as a sound to ascertain presence of bile duct stones. Please note, 
in lister's variety the handle is having a number difference of 3 where numerator is circumference in millimeter at tip and denominator is circumference in millimeter at base in clutton's variety the handle has a number difference of 4 Rewarding abdominal retractor or sergeant is a curved bow like instrument and it comes in different sizes. It is used during abdominal closure to prevent abdominal content coming out while taking bite from peritoneum to guard the bowel using sergeant or finger lift or mop. While knotting in deeper planes bowel and omentum is guarded using sergeant or placing a finger or mop. Please note while taking bite from peritoneum if inadvertently bites are taken from bowel underneath this leads to dangerous fecal fistula this is the last one and we could not find a proper description of this one uh, please comment if you can name this instrument and don't forget to download the pdf for more detailed description thank you